Hello, today we're going to make a basic white bread. It's actually a little on the sweet side and covered with butter uh, flavor, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let me tell you what I have here for ingredients. I have a couple of uh, bread pans, ones of a, of a higher shape, which will give you a higher loaf, and one with the rounded shape, a little bit uh, more um, top will appear on the bread in this one. We also have two bowls, one microwave safe, stick of butter, variable measuring spoon, salt, a one cup measuring cup, a two thirds cup measuring cup. Uh, along with that bowl for melting the butter, I have a cover so when I put it in the microwave, it doesn't splatter all over. We have yeast, beautiful wooden spoon, cutting knife, a cloth which we'll moisten later and put on top of the bread as it rises, granulated sugar, and all-purpose flour. That's all we need to make bread, except a little bit of water. I got two and a half cups of water out of the filtered water on the refrigerator to get that ready. And we also have in the oven a pizza stone that I just started warming up because this is my breadboard, which you also need. With this countertop though, it's cold and I like to keep the yeast active and the, the bread warm as I, as I need it. So we'll warm this up a little bit by putting a pizza stone on it in a little while. But first, let's get this water warmed up. So I want this to be about 110 degrees and I'll go ahead and get that into the microwave in about a minute or two should take care of that. We'll go with a minute and a half and I'll actually take with me a thermometer just so I have that uh, ready here to actually measure the temperature. And I got me a hot pad while I was at it. Okay. Now, while that is warming up, we can go ahead and make sure we have everything ready. Another minute, that might be a little bit long though. It's summertime, so the water's not overly cold coming out of the fridge right now. Let me stop that. Take a measurement. I think it's gonna be a little bit more. So I put my probe in there, turn this on, listen to it beep for a while. Uh, it's 83, 84. I want it a little bit warmer than that, so let's give it a few more seconds. It's a pretty basic recipe, not real hard. Makes a good bread and it's not that hard to do, but you'll notice we don't have any power equipment other than ourselves. So you'll be doing all the work with your hands and your arms. So uh, be ready for that. Uh, the other nice thing is to be sure you have a height of counter or breadboard that you can work on and push down on. So the height does matter on that. And I'm sure it's warm enough now. It might be too warm. We'll find out. Thermometer says... Oh, not bad. 98, 99. So that, that'll be about right. Somewhere around 100 is good. So what we'll do... I know, sounds weird, but this bowl's got metal stuff on it. And it's got two bowls. So that one has the hot water in it now. And with that, I will add a lot of sugar. Two thirds cups of sugar. All right, officially we're done with the sugar and we're done with the two thirds cup. We all know we're gonna use that for a little thing later. But I will now stir in that sugar until it dissolves. No, I do not have an overhead camera, too. So once this dissolves, you end up with a clear, li look, clear looking, extra sweet liquid. And that's what we want. And as soon as that's ready, then we'll put in the yeast. 
we'll put in one and a half tablespoons. So I'll start with the one tablespoon and add the half a tablespoon, which is one and a half teaspoons. And uh, I just kind of work that in a little bit. And as all projects go, you may have heard one of our smoke detectors needs a battery, and that just started. As always, there's something, something always gets you when you're doing video. All right, so we'll get this just kind of coagulated in there, mixed around. I'll set my timer for 10 minutes. And we'll let that set for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we've got other stuff we can do. So we will, at this point, take the stone out of the oven. And now it's nice and warm. I just put it upside down. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Yes, this is a clean counter. First thing we do is clean it really good. So now I've got my work area warming up. I will leave the oven on and slightly open to heat up the top because when we let the bread rise later on, we'll do it on there. So while we're waiting for this, we'll take our two-thirds cup because we're going to need a tablespoon of sugar, oh, sugar, a tablespoon of salt. So we're going to grind a tablespoon of salt. I like the Himalayan pink because it's extra sort of sweet tasting. And now I don't know exactly when I'm going to have a tablespoon, so we'll see how close I get. It's always a challenge. You can always, always experiment with that. Probably not quite enough, but we will find out. Set this for a tablespoon. And I need more. All right, now I have a tablespoon. Came close. Okay, so while that's going on, we can also start working on our butter. So we've got the yeast rising for 10 minutes, or yeast activating for 10 minutes. We've got the counter getting nice and warm. We've got salt ready. And the next thing we need, yes, I said there's a lot of butter in this recipe. We take a tablespoon of butter, roughly, a little less than that maybe, put it in each of these pans that's going to be used to coat the pans later. We will take about two tablespoons of butter and we'll melt that up later and you'll see why. But we start with four tablespoons of butter and that's going to get mixed into our, our dough. So I've got this somewhat softened, but I also like to cut it into little bits and the reason is when I throw it in the microwave this way, it doesn't splatter all over and pop and make a mess out of the microwave. And I know you think the cover would help, but I've had these covers pop off if I don't do this right. So I don't like getting buttery messes all over. So I do this. And kind of cut that up, spread it around a little. I didn't even put it on my, on my warmer and get it started. All right, the yeast is kind of bubbling up over here, which is good. Set it off to the side for now. 
We're also done with this, so put that out of the way. And I start warming up the butter. It has to be completely melted, so I'll give it, yes, a whole minute. I'll do it in two chunks. That way, if it starts popping, I'll prevent it from taking over the kitchen. And we have five more minutes. We have to wait for the yeast. So we'll hang around for five more minutes while that goes on. Meanwhile, I'll move this, uh, my, my wonderful heating stone here, make me a little more warm area. So I've got a little bit of space to work on. And it just feels warm to the touch. It's not hot or anything. It's just want to keep it from terminating the action of the yeast. So we let that go for a while. This bread, uh, by the way, when it's done, is kind of interesting. It actually is very good in the microwave. You can warm it up in the microwave. It doesn't get chewy like so many bread products do. I don't know why not. I'm not trying to figure out why. I'm just trying to say it is. So it's good that way. And because the recipe always makes two loaves, if you have any friends, you can give one loaf away to a friend. If you don't have friends, then by the time you give them some loaves of bread, they'll be your friends. And you'll have some new friends. Uh, we do save this top because I do have to melt some more butter later on. So I just kind of let that set here. While we continue to wait for the yeast to rise. Rise. Well, it gets activate and eat some of that sugar up. Looks kind of nice and foamy in there, and it's hard to see on the camera, but foaming up and, and getting going in there. The other thing to keep in mind is if it's if it's too hot of a day, you know, today's not too hot, you may want to not set your butter out so early, but you know, some people do set butter out early. Some people leave butter out all the time. I don't really know what the right answer is on that, but I do like it soft for spreading around the pans, and hey, it's only out for a couple hours this way. Uh, the other thing is you'll note I still have the oven area warming up. I do like to let the bread rise on a fairly warm area. By leaving this open, it gets yeah, fairly warm around here, and that definitely helps the bread as, as the process continues. And so, good way to heat the house in the winter. Bread making is probably more fun in the winter because you do get to heat the area up, which gives you an excuse to keep it warm. I have uh, here an electric stove. It's, you'll notice it's got the small stove on the top, the big stove on the bottom. The big stove is necessary for doing the bread but the small one's great for warming up the top. And if it's still cold on the top, later on I'll also add the, the burners on just for a little while to take a chill out of it because you don't want the bread to stop activating once you, once you start putting it on there. So a few more minutes, just two more minutes. The yeast is getting all nice and fluffy looking. Let's see if I can turn that towards you a little bit. See that there? Looking pretty, pretty good. Obviously, it's live, it's good. If your yeast does nothing after you give it sugar water for 10 minutes, you may start to wonder about the quality of your yeast and may want to get some different yeast. Uh, or you may realize that you had the water too hot, too cold, or uh, perhaps uh, you had chlorine or something in your water that, that didn't get along real well with, with the yeast and you killed it. Then you have to start over. Or the neat thing is you could continue and you can make the bread and just don't expect it to rise. Use it for pizza dough or something like that. Uh, it makes a wonderful pizza dough. I know it sounds like you'll have a lot and you will, but uh, that's, that's an alternative. You can also take that dough and spread it thin and put cooked meats and vegetables and 
peppers and sausage or whatever you like, sort of shove it into the yeasted bread and flour once we're done with that. Uh, make it thin, roll it up, and then bake that, and you get a real nice doughy, tasty sort of product that is a great way to use wasted bread because it didn't turn out. Because in that way, you can say it did turn out, and that was your plan all along. Yes, I have done that, and it, it works good. Sometimes things don't go as planned. Believe it or not, it does not always work. All right, we just have a few more seconds on here. So our first step in our yeast then is to add some flour. So this recipe takes between, let me get this out of the way, it takes between six and seven cups of flour. So what I like to do is just open that baby up. Wow, that's a lot of flour. And sort of make flattened tops go back and forth till it's about level because you don't want to overdo this. And I just put six cups in to start with. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what I'll do is I'll take another cup, or almost a cup, because it never takes the whole thing. Have it handy here, because I'll use that to bread the surface as I need the dough. And to bring it to the right consistency. Now we're done with the flour, so put that a little bit out of the way, put this stuff out of the way. Now, what I do, and again, make sure your fingernails are clean, wash your hands before you start this process, do all that fun stuff, as well as making sure your breadboard is clean. So then go ahead and sprinkle on your salt. I like to mix my dry ingredients together a little bit here. So I just take this and this way I'm, I'm sure the salt and the flour are somewhat distributed together. Don't end up with salty chunks or something. I guess you could just dissolve it right in the water too, but you know, this is the way I do it. And now you'll probably wonder about that butter that we made. I just put a little bit in here right now. I put the rest in later, so I just pour, it's probably about a tablespoon. I find that if I put the butter in later, it forces me to, to mix it better. And also I think the, the butter then ends up being more on the surface of the bread and it brings out that flavor. Can't guarantee it, but I've done it both ways where you, you mix all the butter in right away and then also where you don't. And then I preferred it where you don't mix it all in right away and you add it later. Now, that said, that occurred in accident, on accident because one time I forgot to mix the butter in and they had all the stuff all mixed up. No, it's not that much stuff, but I had everything mixed up. And then I noticed, oh look, I didn't add the butter. So I had to add all the butter later. And believe it or not, that's a hard thing to do because that butter does not mix in real well. And your dough is not in the, the best consistency to start with. However, that's what we're working on right now. It will not be the best consistency to start with. It'll be kind of sticky, tacky, not the way you usually would like it because I have not put the butter in yet for the most part. So right now I'm just stirring it up. And no, I did not turn it sideways to begin with because it would have dumped out. So I kind of push the edges in, push it around, and just keep working it around the bowl, spinning it around. I'd put my hands in it right away, but if you put your hands in it right away, they just get really dirty really fast because the stuff's sticky. So I stir it first. And that's about all the stirring I can do. And the neat thing about this dough is that it has no eggs or other products in it that 
are going to rapidly go rancid or something, or that you can't eat raw. So you can actually taste this stuff along the way if you want to. And uh, it actually tastes pretty good. So now I'm just kind of continuing the mixing process, making sure I get all the loose flour out of the bowl and into the pile of, now it will be bread here in a little while. And just kind of squeeze it with your fingers and turn it and sort of blend it together so you're, you're really mixing it. And you notice it's not, for those of you who make bread pretty often, it's, you know, it's not what you want your bread dough to look like. But that's because I haven't added the butter yet. The butter will make a big difference in a little while. This particular batch seems to be uh, pretty decent on the dry side already, which is interesting. Usually it's a little wetter than this. Expect uh, flowers dry, air is a little dry, whatever. All right, so now we got sort of a sticky mess. And feel free to taste it at this point if you want to. Give you something to snack on when, when you're working later. But it is better with the butter. You know, butter, bacon, they make everything better. So there we go. Pour in the rest of that butter. Now while that's going on, I'm going to take that roughly two tablespoons of butter I had before that we saved and put that in here because I'm going to need that right after I put the bread into the bowls, into the two piles. So I want it ready to go now. Because that's what we'll do while it rises. So, now with dirty hands, take that and put that in the microwave. Not a lot in there, I'm only going for 30 seconds this time. Now, I put my hands into the nice buttery stuff and start working this around. So the, the goal here then is to integrate the butter all through the dough, which is hard because it likes to stay on the outside. As you can perhaps see, there's a, a sort of buttery ooze on the outside. And I think by doing it last, we end up with a little bit of that going on anyway. What I'm doing is just put it in my hands and make a fist, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And we'll do this till it's pretty well mixed together. It also cleans the bowl nicely. It also tastes very good. I'm refraining from sampling, you may have noticed that. Usually I try a little bit, but it looks, feels good. It feels like it's about the right consistency at this point. So it doesn't take that long. As I work, oops, excuse me, as I work that around, you notice you do get a nice wad of dough. Now it is kind of tacky. That's an indication that it's going to need some more flour because you want it to be smooth when you're done. And because it's like crazily sticking to my hands, I will just sprinkle on a little bit of flour, not much. There we go. And work that around. And pretty soon you get that bowl out of your way, and then you can see the process. So now we got this nice hunk of dough. Now it's time to do the kneading stuff. So I'll scrape whatever I can off my fingers. And I'll give that another 30 seconds in here to make sure it's totally melted. And start this. So push down with the hands and spread that stuff out. So this will also tell us if it's sticking to the counter, we need a little more flour. And it should stick to the counter the first couple times. It usually does. Fold it in quarters and do it again. 
So what we're going to do is add a little flour because it's kind of sticky. It shouldn't be real sticky. By the time you do this 10 times, yeah, I did say 10 times, you end up with a pile of dough that is very hard to flatten because it does not want to. And then you know your kneading process is complete. But I always do a 10 even if it seems like it doesn't need it. Just because that way you're sure. So, so we still have some flour there. That was how I folded it back up. Round number three. Sometimes I lose track. Then you always err on the high side. So really turning so that it kind of bounces right back after you squish it. Good sign. And this is the part where you get your exercise. It's also why you need your counter height to be about right. If you get a little weight on it, it's a lot easier. That's why I wear my hiking boots. It gives me a little extra height. Okay. And I didn't show you that, sorry. Off to number four. You can already see it's changing its consistency because it tends to bounce back. Let me move that out of the way a little. You really have to work it. Work it out. Otherwise, you end up with bad bread. That's number four. You can kind of see it's starting to smooth up a little bit. Number five. I know it's fun to watch, isn't it? That's the way it is. I guess they make machines that do this kind of stuff too, but then you don't get exercise. And you can't say you made it by hand. They notice it's not sticking to anything much, so it's it's about right, consistency. Let's see how it goes. Eh, maybe stick in a little bit. Give it a little bit. Number six. And usually I end up with close to a quarter to a half of that last cup used. But it's all a matter of feel and consistency at this point. And no skimping on the work. Six done. Four to go. Number seven. Usually I play music at this point. Some good uh, stuff going, a little beat or something. But, then it's about copyright. So I left that off. See if I can find some background music. You'll find out if you're hearing music. I didn't have it on while I was doing this found something later but it is nice sort of like doing some sort of workout while you're getting something to eat what could be better because after workout you always need to eat right this is also the time when 
you don't answer the phone or anything like that because you're in the middle of needing. Sticking a little bit after number seven. So we'll give it a little more. You notice they don't make a lot of mess doing this either. It's kind of nice. You get a good product done without a mess. Starting to feel good. That's how it forms kind of separately. Layers stay separate, not sticking to stuff, yet still quite moist. And you notice as you go along, it gets harder and harder to make it get flat because it does not want to get flat. It's a good sign. And you can do this in the middle of summer, it does get kind of hot by this time in your room. And you get sweaty. Be sure you don't drip on your bread. It doesn't need the extra salt or anything. Just kidding. Never did that. I was even keeping count. I haven't. So, as we say, be sure to give plenty of kneading. Yes, one time I also messed up the measuring of the flour, believe it or not. And ended up I had to had all this dough it had too much flour. And it's really hard to take the flour back out. It's a lot easier to put more in. So keep that in mind. However, if that happens to you, what do you do? Well, you add some beer to it until it's nice and moist. You get a nice beer battered flavor for a pizza crust or again a shamboli type of thing that you can roll up. Put your favorite ingredients mixed in with the dough. And it is yummy. So remember, every time you screw up, it's an opportunity for a new recipe. And it always tastes good. Just be creative with it. I'm going to go one more because I think that's for sure 10. And you'll see now it's pretty much like dough. Like it should be. Now your 10th one is especially important when you fold it up. Because you'll find that whatever shape you have and whatever surface you have at that point is going to determine what your bread is going to have on its surface. Because this stuff is not very friendly in terms of being able to like add on another layer or something. It stays pretty separate at this point. It's like one chunk of dough.
but never skimp on the kneading. Unless you have to leave the house soon or something. Then you might have to, I don't know. Great. So I now have this wonderful hunk of dough, which I form into sort of a ball. Now, it has to rise for an hour, so I'm gonna take some of this loose stuff out of this bowl. I think I'll eat it. Nah, I better not. That would be impolite, because you guys can't eat any. And I'm gonna take that butter that I have warmed up right in the microwave. You'll notice your hands are pretty clean at this point. This stuff does not stick at this point. Take that nice bowl of butter and pour half in each bowl. Roughly. This isn't rocket science, this is bread making. All right, done with that stuff. Now I did, as you recall, have a very sharp knife. That's because you gotta cut this wad of dough and the wad of dough doesn't cut that easily. So I try to cut it in half. If you don't cut it in half, you get a small loaf and a big loaf. Almost always happens. Because a little bit of error makes a big difference. So I got this great wad of dough and I'll take it and put it in this buttery bowl, spin it around, get it all nice and coated with butter. Nothing is better than a nice buttery ball of bread dough. I have a rough side, I'll put that down, which is usually the side I cut from. Make this one beautiful. Put it in this bowl. Do the same thing. Get that butter all around it. Rough side down. So I have a nice smooth surface on the top because that will turn into the top of the loaf. So I'll angle that for you. There's one. It tends to move. There's a lot of butter in there. And here's the other. Now, I've got to put these someplace nice and warm. You may recall I've been making a nice warm place over here. So put them over here. And I will take that wonderful antique cotton cloth, because they work the best, add some moisture to it. So I get it nice and wet. And squeeze it out so it's evenly moist. And I have a nice moist towel. Put that over it. And if I feel the top of this oven, it's, or stove, sorry, I'm not touching the oven, I'm touching the stove. It's probably a nice 90 degrees, 100 degrees right now. So that's great. So I'll close the door, I'll leave that little oven on, it doesn't take too much energy. Set this over to one hour. and let it rise. And I'll be back in an hour. So for now, it's time to clean up, except for these two pans and the butter that's in them. Everything else, you're done with. See ya. All right. You'll note that an hour has passed. If you're keeping track and you're looking at the clock, it was slightly more because I had to get ready. So next step then is to butter our pans which we've set with a little bit of butter in them, and then put our bread into the pans. This is a very quick step. So you can just simply spread in your butter. I like to be sure it's nicely coated everywhere. Because like we said, butter is always good. So Spread it all around, make sure nothing sticks. I know these actually might be non-stick pans, but the butter makes it better. So that's what counts. There we go, that one's good and ready. Do the other one, likewise. I should have said my wooden spoon. See the wooden spoon thing I had put in the oven while it's warm 
kind of dry out any liquids that were in there and then re-oil it and put it away. So that way it's ready to go next time. It won't get mildewy or any yuckiness. Just got that oven on to warm up the surface. So put it to use. All right. That one's marvelously coated. Okay. So we take our cloth off. And you will note that these have risen a little bit. There's a lot more in there now than there used to be. So, we take each of those, I'll try not to make too much noise here on the mics, kind of reach under, it's nice and warm under there. Take it and then push it into the pan. I try to Spread it out somewhat, make it nice and level. Take that butter that's dried up in here, spread it along the top because you certainly don't want to waste that. That'll make a nicer surface. There we go, look at that. Take this one, do the same thing. Probably should have put that one in the other pan because I think this one is a little, I shouldn't even say a little, a lot bigger. So this one's gonna really overflow the edges and this is the one that don't have as much room for. But that's what cooking is all about. And take that extra butter, share it, spread it, and you'll now see this one's looking good. That one's a little full. This one's a little empty. It'll be a smaller loaf. And lo and behold, now we take these and we put them back in this nice warm area. I'll put them this way so they're both evenly heated. Put a cloth over them and set your timer for one hour. And that's it for this step. Meanwhile, clean up a couple more bowls and I'll get out a, a cooling rack. So when they're done cooking, we'll have that ready. Of course, that's after the hour, but uh, that'll rise for an hour. About 15 minutes before it's done rising, I will go ahead and turn the lower oven on to 350 so that it's ready to go uh, at the time we want to cook. All right, another hour has passed. So you notice I do have the cooling rack out, so we're working ahead of the game. But right now it's time to go check this bread. The oven's preheated. So as you can see, it has a uh, risen a little bit. So now it's time to pop that into the oven for oh probably about 27 minutes at 350. So I'll carefully put it in here on the middle rack so that it's not too close to the top, not too far from the bottom. Gently place it there. You'll notice, as I mentioned with this pan, it, it does hang over the edges a little. I'm gonna tweak that in just slightly. It'll, it'll shrink once touched, uh, just to try to reduce burning on that. It's not shrinking too much. Okay, anyway, get that in there. That was hanging over quite a bit, so that may burn a little bit. But, now let's set our timer to, let's try 25 minutes. And off we go. It is cooking and it does smell good. Anyway, about 25 minutes, I'll come back. And I can take the bread out of the oven and see how it does. Uh, hope it's good. All right, we're into our final seconds of waiting until the bread is done. Let's see how it's looking in here. Ah, it's a nice brown. I think it looks good. Got our extra hot pad here. And voila. See, this one has, as suspected, kind of flowed over the edge, but it looks like it did not burn, so that's good. However, this one also flowed over the edge a little bit, but did not burn.
So, we should just be able to turn these over and out it comes. And same thing with this one. And there you go. They're rather hot, but flip them over, cover them with that same beautiful cloth, let them cool, keep them a little bit moist. Do that for about half an hour. Then they should be ready to go into a Ziploc or Tupperware or whatever kind of storage container you have to continue the drying, leave it loose for a while so condensation doesn't form. And with any luck, you'll have them last more than an hour or two uh, before they're completely consumed. Anyway, there you go. That's bread making. And one last look at those wonderful loaves of bread ready to eat in a little while. If you do them right away, they'll uh, probably be too gushy. I do tend to undercook them slightly so that they're really good the next day or in a few hours. Immediately, they might be a little bit soft yet. Anyway, there you go buttery sweet bread for all occasions. Enjoy!